So you want to buy a watch, but you can't quite afford it. I was in the exact same situation a few months ago regarding a Mido Ocean Star 200. This watch currently retails for about £760. Now I didn't want to pay that, so I instead looked on eBay and just like plenty of other brands, I was able to find a Mido Ocean Star at a greatly reduced price. So hopefully today I'm going to be able to show you some techniques that I personally use when buying on eBay. These are techniques that I use to buy watches and plenty of other things. So hopefully I'll be able to pass those along to you and you'll be able to use them to buy your own watch. So the first thing is quite obvious. Well, maybe it isn't actually. And that is actually knowing what you want to buy. And it sounds obvious, but a lot of people don't really know. They just know that they want to set out to buy an automatic watch or maybe a little bit more specific. Maybe they want to buy a Seamaster or something, but they don't know what year they want to buy it from. They don't know if they want the ceramic bezel. They don't know if they want the coaxial movement and they don't know if they want black or blue. They're in between. They need to know exactly what they want to buy, what year they want to buy it from and how much that really should cost them. So what I'd always recommend doing is once you've found out what you want to buy, is trying to watch as many items of that item on eBay. So when you're on eBay and you're scrolling down, you can watch items. So you'll let them go through their bidding period and you can revisit them after they finish bidding and see what they went for. This allows you to then get a rough idea of how much the item you want should go for, depending on if it has box or papers, the conditions new or used, plenty of other options. It gives you an idea of how much you should be spending on the secondhand market for your item. So once you've found an item that you like the look of and you think it's a good price, for my Mido Ocean Star, I found it going for about £400. And I was quite happy with that because normally, like I said, they retail for about £720. So I then proceeded to watch it and watch it. And then I moved on to the next stage, which is contacting the seller. I contact each seller a lot. Now, I don't mean to an obnoxious point, but I mean to get as much information as possible out of them. Why they're selling it is a really important part because then you'll roughly understand if it's stolen or not. Then moving on to what condition. Has it got box or papers? If they haven't specified, you need to make sure that you make them specify. Now, if there's not very good photos on the website, ask for some more photos. Most sellers will just send you some photos, no problem. So if you want to see the clasp, say, could you give me a close up of the clasp, please? You didn't provide any photos of that. And they'll more than likely send those to you. The next thing is quite an obvious thing and doesn't just apply to watches. And that is the seller's history. Has the seller got a good history? What's their reputation like? Has it got 100% rating? Or if you have a look at their ratings, is it all from them buying or all from their selling? You traditionally want to have a seller which has got positive seller reviews as opposed to buying reviews. And while you're looking at the seller's information, try and check where it's coming from. Because if your watch is coming from places like Italy, which is where my Mido came from, then you're going to have to be subjected to import tax, which is something that most people don't really take into consideration. So definitely look where the watch is coming from. So you found your item and you found a buyer. But how do you know what you're buying is the genuine article? Authenticity is one of the biggest problems on places like eBay because there's a lot of fakes out there. So you need to be careful. So what I personally do is run through a step by step process when trying to decipher if something is real or not. Starting off with something after you've done your research, this is, is the serial number. A lot of watches have serial numbers on the case back or on the inside of the lugs on the back side of them. Now, the serial number is not a guaranteed way to know if something's real or not, so don't rely too heavily on it. But if you do know that your watch that you're looking at is from like the 1990s, normally the providers will have a list of the years they issued that watch and then the serial numbers that it started with might be like nine zero and then it has the rest of the serial number, for example. So if you're looking at a serial number that starts with 21, like 2021, and you're looking at a 90s watch, it could be an indicator that's fake. Now, like I said, this is not a guaranteed indicator because, you know, some fakes can use genuine serial numbers. There's nothing to stop them doing that. But it's just another thing to look out for. The other thing to look for is box and papers. Because if your watch has box and papers, it's more than likely a bit more legitimate than something that doesn't. The reason being is if this watch is stolen, then they're more than likely not going to have time to steal the box of papers because it's not going to be on the person while they're robbing them. If I like walked up to someone on the street and stole their watch, 
I'm not going to be able to have the box and papers to go with that. But then that's what's to stop me from then going on eBay and purchasing secondhand box and papers. There's nothing to stop me doing that. Some box and papers, especially on higher end brands, do have corresponding serial numbers so that you know it's the correct box and papers. But then you're probably not going to be able to see that on the eBay photos. So it is one of those, it's just another indicator and not a surefire yes or no thing to look for. But let's say the watch you're looking at totals to more than £2,000. That makes the watch eligible for the eBay Authenticity Guarantee, which is a service eBay provides on some watches that are over £2,000. Now, not every watch over £2,000 will have this, so you can filter this by the eBay filtering when you're searching for your watch. Now, what this means is instead of the seller selling straight to the buyer, there's a middle step where the seller will send the watch to an authenticity centre first. The authenticity centre when receiving the watch will open up the case back and check the movement is legitimate and the watch itself is legitimate. Now say if the watch itself was legitimate but it was sent on a fake bracelet, the buyer then would be notified and then they had the right to refuse and then the watch would be sent back to the seller and the buyer would have a full refund. I've personally never bought a watch through the authenticity guarantee so I can't testify to how it all works but that's what eBay says will happen so I assume they'll stand by that and that is what will happen. So how do you stop yourself from being scammed? Well, the best way I've found is by straight up asking the seller, is this watch authentic and is everything included also authentic? Because then when they respond yes, and if they then send you a fake, you then have evidence to then go back saying this was false advertising, I was sold and misled, I then want a full refund. And I personally always go through PayPal whenever purchasing anything on eBay, so if I do have this situation arise, I can then go through the PayPal courtrooms and try and get my money back. eBay also does offer a money back guarantee, so I'd look out for that as well, so that if you do get scammed or if your item doesn't arrive, you can then go through that to try and get your money back. Now once I'd bought my watch, I had to wait a while for it to arrive from Italy, but once it did arrive, I was greeted with a hefty amount of import tax. Now here in the UK, that's 20%. Not 20% of the watch, that's 20% of everything. So that's postage and packaging included. So make sure when you're looking on eBay that you take this into consideration when purchasing an item because it might seem like a really good deal, but when you add that 20%, it might not be. So that's definitely something to look into. So now that your watch has arrived, what do you do next? Just wear it and enjoy it? Well, you can do. If you've bought the authenticity guaranteed, then yeah, you pretty much just can. But for some that have bought watches that without the authenticity guarantee and you're not 100% sure still, then you'll do what I did and take it to the next step. How do you guarantee its authenticity? Take it to a local watchmaker, have them have a look over. Yeah, they might be able to identify if it's fake quite quickly, but then maybe not. So what I did is get in touch with the company that makes the watch. So I contacted Mido themselves and asked if I could send it in for an authenticity check which they said yes to. So I sent my watch in and then I received news that it was authentic. They then had a look through the watch, servicing it basically, or having a look what needed servicing. They gave me a huge spreadsheet of things that were wrong with it. It had scratches, crystal need replacing, there was dust on the dial, all things I did not care about. The only thing I wanted replacing was the bezel because it was a bit scratched up. So they replaced that for me and it was all good until I got the watch back and then I realized the bezel was massively out of alignment, so I had to send it back once again and have them redo it. But then that was fine, they didn't charge me anything for that, so yeah, the bezel now looks great, and everything else I know is authentic. Now the only thing that was a bit weird with my watch was actually the clasp itself. For whatever reason, the clasp's micro-adjustment had been removed. Now I'm not sure why this was done, maybe it was broken or faulty, not too sure. But it doesn't really affect me in any way, because I was going to change the strap on this watch anyway and I've purchased a fabric strap through Mido for £33. That should be arriving within the next two weeks, and I'll have that ready for the review of this watch. Now, if you're wondering how much money did I actually save by buying on eBay, totaling up, I saved £244. Now, I'd say that's a decent amount of savings, and I'm pretty damn happy. It took a while to get to where I am now, but I'm really enjoying the watch, and I think it was worth it. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you want to see more like it, subscribe if you haven't already. It's free after all. But until next video, goodbye.